Welcome to video five of nine for chapter one. This video I'm going to be mostly discussing section one, two, four. Um, and the topic is going to be translating recursive structure and also identifying main operators. So, so far we've got two operators that we know how to translate, um, conjunction and negation. We haven't introduced uh, disjunction and conditional yet. I'm going to do that in the next video. In this video, what I want to do is take the two we have and show how we can translate statements that are not only compound statements built up from atomic statements, but compound statements that are built up from compound statements, so recursive structure. And then the, uh, the related topic of main operators. So. Take a look at this uh, sentence. This is a compound sentence. I am not hungry, but I am thirsty. Now, if we identify the atomic statements here, which by now, hopefully, you've got kind of a handle on, you can see that there's two. Um, I am thirsty, I am hungry. As a reminder, the not is a negation. So this is not atomic. I, I am hungry is atomic. I am not hungry is compound. That's the negation operator added to this atomic statement. Now, if we rewrite this statement, plugging in T and H, we get not H but T. And should be pretty obvious that this but becomes a dot. I mentioned uh, when we were discussing conjunction that but is a conjunction. I'll talk more about that in chapter two, um, why but is a conjunction and why people have the intuition that it means something different from conjunction. Um, I mean, it kind of does, but it's logically the same. And we have not H and T, essentially. Now, there's two operators here. There's not just one. So if you go back to the previous video, everything we translated only had one operator. There was either a tilde or there was a dot, and that was it. Here we have two operators. And it's important to figure out or to be aware of anytime you're looking at a statement in formal notation. Uh, what is the main operator? Well, what does that mean? The main operator is the operator that, put it this way, if you're putting together pieces into bigger pieces and then big, those bigger pieces into still bigger pieces, it's the operator that put the two biggest pieces together or the one biggest piece together. It was the last operator you used to make the biggest thing, okay? And here, the last operator was the conjunction. This, con this conjunction put together two statements. It put together this compound statement, not H, together with this atomic statement, T, to come up with the compound statement, not H and T. Let's compare this to a different statement that uses the same two atomic statements. It's not true that I am hungry and thirsty. So let's translate this one. Notice, first off, that this statement has a compound predicate. I am hungry and thirsty just means it's just a condensed way or a sort of concise way in English of saying I am hungry and I am thirsty. Obviously means the same thing, it's just a sort of more economical way of saying that. So there's really still the same two atomic statements are there. So we'll use these two atomic statements, and if we rewrite this, we'll get it's not true that H and T. Okay? Now, this statement is actually ambiguous. Our original statement isn't. We actually lose a little bit um, when we got rid of the compound. Here, I'll show you, kind of, you can see what that means. But if we just look at this statement, the one that's kind of half notation, half English, there's two ways we could uh, analyze this statement as having been constructed. Okay. First, okay, this statement is ambiguous. First, maybe it's this. I'm going to put parentheses around here to sort of show the different ways you could think of this statement. You might say, well, look, what it's saying is, it's not true that, and the, the thing that's not true is this, H and T. 
So it's a negation operator applied to this conjunction. The other thing, okay, and if, if you thought of it that way, you might translate it this way. It's not true that, and then the thing that's not true is this conjunction, H and T. The other way you might think that this, uh, analyze this is to say, well, no, the whole thing is a conjunction. The first conjunct is it's not true that H, and the second conjunct is just T. And if you analyzed it that way, it would look like this. Okay, it'd be not H and T. Now let's put both of these up at the same time. Right? It's not true that H and T, <clears throat> I've just said there's two different ways you could sort of, th this is ambiguous. Okay, well here's one way to figure out when you've got an ambiguous statement. Sometimes they're just ambiguous and that's it, you just don't know which of two structures, two formal, uh, two ways of, of translating a statement into formal notation are correct because the original statement is just logically ambiguous. But sometimes there are things you can do to figure out which one is really meant. So one thing you could do is to go back to the original statement and try both interpretations. Not the one that's half notation and half English, but the full English, the one that's all English in C. So here I've, I've recopied it here, but I've put the parentheses. It's not true that I am hungry and thirsty. That makes sense. Okay, if we put the parentheses here, if we treat the negation as operating on this conjunction, which is this one, that kind of makes sense. What if we try to do it the other way? What if we try to sort of uh, analyze this as a conjunction where the first conjunct is, it's not true that I'm hungry, and the last conjunct is just thirsty? Well, this isn't really a statement. And in fact, and it's not because this was just part of a compound predicate here, I am hungry and thirsty. And in fact, using compound predicates is one way that English and other natural languages use to help disambiguate. Because this is a compound predicate, we know that this conjunction is a component of this negation. And we can see that by noticing it doesn't make sense if we put the parentheses this way. So this doesn't make sense. We just cross this out, which means this we can't view it as a conjunction, right? So it is instead, it's a negation. So now I'm putting the two different statements that we just translated up here so we can sort of compare. The first one we did, I am not hungry, but I am thirsty, is here. We did this a few minutes ago, not H and T. The one we just did, it's not true that I am hungry and thirsty. Not true that, and then this conjunction is the thing that's not true. Notice that both of these statements, this one here and this one here, they use the same atomic statements in the same order, first H and then T. They use the same operators, also kind of in the same order. First is the tilde and then a dot, right? In fact, both of them have a tilde, then an H, then a dot, then a T but they mean different things. And the difference has to do with the order in which they were constructed logically. This one is a conjunction. The conjunction is the main operator. The two conjuncts that it put together was first the negation H and then secondly, the atomic statement T. But the main operator here is the conjunction. This statement is a negation. The main operator is this tilde. It's operating on a conjunction, okay? The, the negated statement is the conjunction H and T, okay? So what, uh, what I've tried to show here is two things. First off, how to translate a recursive, a recursively constructed statement, a statement that has, is not only compound, but that has components which are themselves compound and to get a handle on what the main operator is. The main operator is the operator that is responsible for the whole statement. Okay, it's the, it's the last one that was applied to build the statement that we're looking at. Okay, this is a negation. It was applied to a conjunction. 
this is a conjunction, it was applied to a negated statement and an atomic statement. Okay, that's it for this video.